Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we have all been waiting for. I'm delighted to call to the podium Crown Prince Raza Pahlavi II to deliver his remarks. Your Highness, the podium is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if that's adjustable or not. Uh, does it come up a bit? Can you hear me all? Well, once again, good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, uh, let me thank our uh, host for having us here. I'm extremely proud to, during this historic trip, to be uh, with you today. Again, I apologize for the delay, but we stopped on our way in front of a mural that depicted the woman, Life Freedom. We wanted to message back to our fellow compatriots in Iran that here in Israel, uh, the Israeli people are standing in solidarity. Absolutely. So forgive me for the delay, but it was a necessary message to send. Um, you know, um, if I could describe in one word so far our trip here for the first time, I can only use one word, inspirational. And, um, you know, being in Jerusalem in that, uh, I mean, truly inspired the whole history and everything. There's a reason it's been said that blessed are the peacemakers. And um, the director was talking about this, showing out graphs about uh, nuclear deployments or maritime intervention and all that. I hope that this center will soon be talking about rebuilding Iran, developing water resources, bringing investment in the most afflicted areas, rather than to worry about all that negativity that exists. That's why we are all here and hoping for a future. Now, my philosophy has always been never look back, always look forward. With one exception, we look back not to forget and remember the past. Because without that, we will never know where we're going. And um, therefore, why should the world be different? Because as it is, it's not the future that our children want to inherit. And we are here today knowing the consequences of not taking action at the most crucial time. This is the moment, one moment in history when the star have aligned for change for significant change, for decisive change. And, you know, we're in a center of academic studies and research, and there's thinking, and there is pondering, and it could even lead to planning. But at the end of the day, what makes a difference is making a decision, making a choice. And in this case, we have to ask, beyond the obvious commonality of interest that Israelis and Iranians together as natural partners and allies, for the rest of the world to finally decide which side of history do they want to stand? Do they stand with us or do they remain silent? Talking about inspiration, Martin Luther King once said, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Mm -hmm. Having said that, and I would much rather hear your question and answer them than give you a lecture, even though it's a podium. <laughs> Every time you get behind a podium, you get sort of like <laughs> excited about talking. I've often been accused that I talk sometimes too much. <laughs> so therefore, I try to be very brief. So what are we talking about? We're talking about every potential to become a reality. We don't need to start from scratch. The Iranian people are the most natural conduit to change. They are your natural army in place. And they have fought the battle completely, completely without any means of support so far and yet they have sustained the resistance. Imagine what they could do if they had real support. 
You know, when we hear and I talk to them all the time, including political prisoners, and they don't say, come and liberate us. They come and say, we'll do the job, but give us internet access. Give us funding so we can organize labor strikes so we can finally push this regime over the cliff. For that, we need international support and coordination. For that, we need resources. For that, we need all those who understand that right after this regime is gone, we enter a period of transition. We have to think of the immediate future and then the long-term planning. We have to talk about a roadmap of what it would mean and the potential that Iranians, once liberated, would be able to achieve very fast. Because every, I won't even say year, I won't even say month, I will say every day that goes by, the opportunity cost to Iran is huge. Just on the environmental matter, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to come to Israel, besides the obvious, was also knowing that the best experts and scientists in the field that can deal with our water crisis, which is not just an Iranian problem, it's a regional problem. But imagine if you don't address that. Our whole ecosystem depends on that. If you want to develop tourism tomorrow as a major industry, where are the people going to come and watch? Dried rivers in Esfahan? Dried lakes in uh, Orumia, uh, gone uh, marshlands in uh, the south or the north? Of course not. That's part of the whole perspective of how meaningful it could be of bringing more stability and more investment and more development as opposed to more instability, more people who will have to leave their areas of living because there's simply no more water left. Anyway, I'm not going to go too much into details, but. I'm sure you understand how consequential it could be every second we wait. So the call to action is now. And our messaging to Israeli citizens, to the world over, is stand in solidarity with the Iranian people. Help us bring maximum support. Give us all the tools and the means that they need to overcome this evil regime. And they have already demonstrated they're going to die for, for freedom. They know where they want to go. All they need is an extra hand. And I hope that as a result of this trip, I've been able to attract attention to the issue, to prove to the whole world that the Islamic regime in Iran is an aberration and not the norm. Mm -hmm. And I hope that any reference from here on is to tell that we make a distinction between Iran and its people and the Islamic regime ruling them. I know it's not at, uh, done on purpose, but I implore you to not use the term Iran when you talk about the regime. Use the term the Islamic regime versus the Iranian nation and people. You show clearly that you know the distinction between the two. That's important to build it into the narrative. And finally, I would say that Maintaining the momentum is also very important because no movement based on civil disobedience and nonviolence could maintain long duration without that extra support. In fact, it's been proven, we've seen in recent history, look at Lech Walesa in Poland. It was sustained support until finally it reached its end. It was sustained support and calling for an end to apartheid that finally forced the apartheid regime to sit down in negotiation with Nelson Mandela and the ANC and ultimately put an end to that regime. The difference is that it, with this regime, you can't negotiate because their DNA is simply different than the rest of us. We are talking about a value system where Iranians are seeking the very same liberties and the very same guarantees of freedom of faith, of religion, of ideology, of sexual orientation, or what have you, guaranteed under the rule of law, a secular democratic system with a clear separation of religion from state, which is the only way we can guarantee the freedom of any faith in our country. We've learned this by showing the example of other democratic countries that have had that. That's what we want in our country as well. 
And this is ultimately our ask from the world. Have faith that the Iranian people share your same values as opposed to a regime that is dead set against all these values. A regime that prefers to celebrate death and martyrdom as opposed to a nation that has always celebrated life as you have and we have in our poetry, in our beliefs and everything. We can make this a reality. We can make this a reality. We're not that far from it. It's not long from it. So thank you for giving me this opportunity and our biggest uh, debt of gratitude to Gila, Minister. Who I think in a span of a few days is, is beyond just a you want to call it a political relationship, but really a personal friendship. <laughs> so therefore, um, any comments, questions, I'm here to answer them. Thank you so much.